Located on the island of Java, the magnificent Bora Buddha Temple is the world's biggest Buddhist monument, an ancient site widely considered to be one of the world's seven wonders. The temple sits majestically on a hilltop overlooking lush green fields and distant hills. Built in the 9th century during the reign of the Sailendra dynasty, the temple's design in Guptu architecture reflects India's influence on the region. Yet there are enough indigenous scenes and elements incorporated to make Bora Buddha uniquely Indonesian. It covers an enormous area, measuring 123 by 123 meters. The monument is a marvel of design, decorated with 2,672 relief panels and 504 Buddha statues. The architecture and stonework of this temple has no equal, and it was built without using any kind of cement or mortar. The structure is like a set of massive interlocking Lego blocks held together without any glue. The temple has remained strong even through ten centuries of neglect. It was rediscovered in 1815, buried under volcanic ash. In the 1970s the Indonesian government and UNESCO worked together to restore Bora Buddha to its former majesty. The restoration took eight years to complete and today Bora Buddha is one of Indonesia and the world's most valuable treasures. The temple is decorated with stone carvings and bar relief representing images from the life of Buddha. Commentators claim that this is the largest and most complete ensemble of Buddhist reliefs in the world, unsurpassed in artistic merit. Get around. The best way to explore this site is on foot. As you climb to the top of this magnificent temple you will marvel at the intricate detailed stone carvings displayed on the temple's walls. You will certainly miss a great experience if you visit this enormous temple without learning about its history and importance which are captured on its many reliefs. Guides are available for around AP 50,000. This is a wise investment as a guide will be able to walk you around the site and explain the history of the temple, beginning with its construction during the Sailendra dynasty. The stone carvings attached to the temple display legends and stories which have great philosophical significance. For visitors with children, don't miss the massive green grass area surrounding the Bora Buddha site. You may choose to walk through Green Park from the entrance. Many vendors will offer you souvenirs and other knickknacks as you walk through this area, however there are regulations in place to prevent them from disturbing visitors. Get there. Bora Buddha is only one hour's drive from Yogyakarta. The easiest way to get there is by joining a tour or renting a car. During your journey to Bora Buddha, enjoy the fresh cool air of Michelin City with its roads lined with big shady trees. Bora Buddha itself stands tall against the spectacular backdrop of the Minera mountain range that surrounds it. Entering the temple compound is easy and most visitors choose to wander around on foot. Alternatively, you can chart a cart, pulled by a horse, at a reasonable price. Alternatively, cruise passengers who disembark at Semarang can take a day tour driving through Wonozobo to Bora Buddha. Sometime before the 5th century AD, the influence of Hinduism and Buddhism spread southward from the mainland of Southeast Asia to the islands of Sumatra, Java, Bali and a few others in the archipelago currently called Indonesia. It is misleading to think of all of Indonesia as either an ancient empire or the province of any particular religion. The vast archipelago of over 13,000 islands became the nation of Indonesia only in 1949 and only a few of its major islands were ever settled or much influenced by Hinduism, Buddhism or Islam. There are no archaeological remains of temples in the Indianized states of Java prior to the end of the 7th century as the early Hindu structures were built of wood and have long since decayed in the moist tropic climate. 
the first stone temples, Shiva shrines constructed during the 8th century, are found high on the Deng Plateau, the name Deng meaning the place of the gods. The greatest concentration of Javanese sacred architecture, however, lies on the plain of Kichu, some 42 kilometers northwest of the present city of Yogyakarta. Here stands the beautiful Hindu temple complex of Prambanam and the world-famous Hindu, Buddhist temple of Borobudda. Borobudda, a name deriving from an expression meaning mountain of accumulation of merits of the ten states of Bodhisattva is commonly thought of as a Buddhist structure. Yet its initial construction was planned and conducted by Hindu builders sometime around 775 AD. The enormous first and second terraces were completed by a declining Hindu dynasty. Construction was then halted for some years, and later, from 790 to 835 AD, the Buddhist Sailendra dynasty continued and finally completed the Great Stupa. The huge stone mass might have then been permanently abandoned, for it was difficult to adapt to the needs of Buddhism. However, leaving in evidence such an obvious manifestation of Hinduism was probably not deemed politically correct and thus the unfinished Shiva temple was transformed into the world's largest Buddhist stupa. After 832 AD the Hindu dynasty of Sanjaya began to reunify central Java and soon reappropriated the Buddhist monuments built by the Sailendra. Although the Sanjaya were themselves Hindu, they ruled over a Buddhist majority and thus, while some Hindu modifications and ornamentations were done on Borobudda, the stupa remained a place of Buddhist use. During the 10th and 11th centuries there was a transfer of power from central Java to the east, and the great stupa fell into decline. For centuries the site lay forgotten buried under layers of volcanic ash and jungle growth. In 1815 Europeans cleared the site, in the early 1900s the Dutch began its restoration, and a 21 million US dollar project begun in 1973 completed the work. The Bora Buddha Stupa is a massive, symmetrical monument, 200 square meters in size, sitting upon a low sculptured hill. The monument represents the Buddhist cosmological model of the universe organized around the axis of mythical Mount Buu. Starting at the Eastern Gateway, pilgrims circumambulate the stupa, always in a clockwise direction, walking through nearly five kilometers of open-air corridors while ascending through six square terraces and three circular ones. The pilgrim symbolically spirals upward from the everyday world to the nirvanic state of absolute nothingness. The first six terraces are filled with richly decorated relief panels in which the sculptors have carved a textbook of Buddhist doctrines and a fascinating panorama of 9th century Javanese life. Upon the upper three terraces are 72 small stupas, each containing a statue of the Buddha, these statues are usually headless, relic hunters stole many of the heads, others are in museums. Crowning the entire structure is a great central stupa. Representing Nirvana, it is empty. Borobudda is a Buddhist stupa and temple complex in central Java, Indonesia dating from the 8th century, and a UNESCO World Heritage Site. This is one of world's truly great ancient monuments, the single largest Buddhist structure anywhere on earth, and few who visit fail to be taken by both the scale of place, and the remarkable attention to detail that went into the construction. Set as it is in the heart of the verdant Kenshu plain, the backdrop of mighty active volcanoes only enhances the sense of awe and drama. This huge popularity has its downsides. Both deliberate vandalism and general wear and tear are of great concern for the future integrity of the monument. Please for visitors not to touch anything are made in the form of signs, by broadcast warnings, and by the presence of guards, but this does not stop the problem. 
Many have called for the monument to be closed to casual visitors, and for access to be only via timed guided tours. Bora Buddha has resumed its role as an important place of worship and pilgrimage for Indonesian Buddhists. Visitors should be understanding and respectful of this, especially during major Buddhist holiday periods.